Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Today, I wanna to talk about these custom booster boxes I showed in my Okinawa vacation haul video, pickups video. I mentioned in that video that I bought these as a type of investment, but a different type of investment. And well, today I want to explain to you what I meant when I said that. But before we get into the nitty gritty details, let me just actually explain what these are a bit more in detail. So uh, like I said, these are custom booster boxes. Uh, here we have obviously Shiny Treasure EX. There's 12 packs on each side. So 24 packs of Shiny Treasure EX. And then we have uh, two custom booster boxes of Wild Force and Cyber Judge. Here we have 20 packs on each side. So 40 in total. And the same is the case for Ancient Roar and Future Flash, 20 and 20. I put them into these uh, booster box protective cases and added void stickers. So this is what these are. Uh, these were packs that I bought, like I said, at the Pokemon Center. And I went on five different days. And every time I went on all the five days, I just picked up a few packs. So for example, Shiny Treasure EX, every day I went, I picked up five packs. There's 24 of these in here. The one extra one we had, we opened in that last video or that uh, Okinawa pickups video and we actually pulled a hit, which was kind of crazy to pull a hit out of one pack. But the other 24 packs are in here. Uh, for the other sets, uh, I didn't always buy the same amount. Like here, I always bought five packs. But with these, you know, sometimes I bought uh, 15 packs of Wild Force, another time maybe only five packs of Wild Force. And so it kind of mixed up a little bit. I shuffled them all up and uh, I added them into these booster boxes. Now, this is what these are. Um, but let me explain to you what I meant with that investment. Now, in the traditional sense, an investment in the Pokemon hobby means buying something at a low price or a good price, um, which could be a single card, it could be a greater card, it could be a sealed product like a booster box or an ETB, uh, or heck, it could even be something like a plushie. And to buy something at a reasonable price, adding it to the collection, stashing it away for a few years for an extended period of time. And, uh, you know, if everything goes according to plan and everything goes well, hopefully being able to sell it in the future for a profit. Uh, that's kind of the traditional Pokemon investment. I think everyone knows about this. This is no secret. Um, this, however, is very different, or I think quite different. Uh, with the traditional investment, the main focus, the main priority is financial gain. That is the uh, intended outcome, the ultimate goal. With these, however, the financial game is completely secondary. It's still there, it's still a part of it to an extent, but it is very, very much secondary. These are an investment in my own personal future fun of the hobby. And I think not enough people are aware of this type of investment um, and what it means and why I think it is kind of important. And uh, yeah, a lot of people underestimated how critical this can be for a collector slash investor, especially if you're someone who is kind of like in the middle. What do I mean when I say investing in my own future fun of the hobby? Well, let me show you an example. Here we have a Starbirth booster box. Uh, it's the only Starbirth booster box that I have. Now, I foresee a time in the future, not at the moment, but there is a very good chance that at some point in the future, whether that's six months from now, a year, two, three, four, some years in the future, I might want to open some Starbirth packs for the memories, for the nostalgia, for the fun, because it's a cool set, right? The only way I will be able to do this in the future is to either buy a booster box on the secondary market, which I don't really want to do. I don't really want to spend, you know, um, higher prices or high prices uh, just to open a booster box, even if it is only slightly above MSRP. Um, I can buy loose packs on a secondary market, but that's always very risky with Japanese packs. I don't recommend doing this. You're probably going to get scammed. Or my other option is to, well, open this box I have right here in front of you. Um, my only sealed box of Starbirth. And I know already that the time comes, I will not really want to open this box. Removing the shrink wrap would immediately feel terrible. Um, 
because I would kind of remove the only sealed box from my collection. I don't want to have to do this. With these, however, I don't have to worry about that. I have these available in the future, ready to open if I want to, you know, crack into some of these, which at that point will be older packs. Now, I mentioned that the financial gain goal um, is still somewhat here, but it's completely secondary. What I meant by that is that if these somehow do increase a lot in value, which currently doesn't look like they will, uh, <laughs> they're not that popular. I actually quite like all these sets. Like, I actually do enjoy opening these sets. I think they have beautiful cards inside them. Uh, but, you know, if they somehow were to gain value over time, then I can always sell them if I want to in the future. That option is there, but it's not the priority. Again, the priority is to have stuff available to open in the future. You know, in a way, uh, this void sticker is almost like a break in case of emergency type of seal. <laughs> in a weird way. And I mentioned that this might be especially good if you are like someone who collects but also invests. If you're strictly an investor and all you do is buy sealed booster boxes, you never open packs, then this doesn't make sense to you. If you are, uh, you know, only a collector, then, you know, I think it still makes sense at that point to have some stuff available in the future. But, you know, I think this is very good for someone who is a bit in the middle. And the reason why I say this is that I think a lot of people in the hobby, and that this includes me as well to an extent, I think, uh, we tend to have a very short-term mindset in a way. Uh, what I mean by this is that at a time when all this stuff is readily available, I mean, I picked these up in the Pokemon Center, they had so much of it, you know, and uh, I could go to the Pokemon Centers in Tokyo and buy more of these packs. I can go to card shops and buy these packs. These are very much available. They are also very affordable in the secondary market, the sealed booster box, right? At a time when all this stuff is really everywhere, people don't really want it. But you hear it on the social media. Ah, Wild Forest, Cyber Judge, I don't really like the sets, or I don't think they're that good, you know. Or I might pick up a booster box in the future, you know, who knows what, I don't know. Uh, I don't really want it right now. Human psychology is funny though, right? As soon as stuff is out of print, once it's gone, once it's not being sold at MSRP anymore in the Pokemon centers or in card shops, once the last pack of even Future Flash has been sold over the counter, and the only way to get these is at higher prices, maybe slightly higher, maybe a lot higher, on the secondary market. As soon as that happens, suddenly people want them again, which is funny, right? Or will actually want them. That's usually how it works with Pokemon sets. It's this weird human psychology thing. It's like if it's always there, no one wants it. Once it's not there anymore, everyone wants it. Take uh, English Evolutions, for example. People hated on that set because it was everywhere. <laughs> As soon as it was gone, I mean, the boom happened as well. That played a big part of it, of course. But now today, a lot of people would love to open some Evolution booster packs they bought at MSRP years ago, right? But years ago, when they could have bought them, they didn't because it was everywhere. And so I'm kind of preparing myself for the future. You know, I wish... I would have bought some more Starbirth booster packs when they were readily available. When this set came out, I lived in Kyoto. I now live in Tokyo. And my you know, local convenience store, just around the corner from where I lived, they had Starbirth booster packs readily available. Every single day, I could have picked up some packs. I bought some packs here and there. You know, I picked up a booster box at one point. But... You know, it was just there. It wasn't anything special. It wasn't anything crazy. It's like, yeah, I don't really want to pick up uh, more of this or I don't want to buy some to keep for the future because it's just, you know, it's not that special. It's everywhere, whatever, right? Today, <laughs> you know, um, sometime later, I'm like, man, I wish I would have bought some more packs and kept them to open in the future because right now the only way, like I said, is to go to the secondary market or crack into my only sealed box, which I don't want to do. I'm preparing myself with these. I like opening these sets. I think they are a ton of fun. And I know, already, I know. Like, I've, I've had my fill of these. Like, right now, I don't have the need or the want to open more of these. But I know that in the future, whether that's six months from now, a year, two, three, four, five, ten years from now, who knows, right? At one point in the future, or at some point in the future, I will want to open some Wild Force again. I will want to open some Shiny Treasure EX again. And I will not want to crack into my sealed boxes. And I will not want to go to the secondary market. Or not very much. Depending on the prices, obviously. Right? <laughs> um, 
But this is me preparing myself for the future at this type of investment. And I highly recommend this to everyone. Um, don't go crazy with it. You know, always obviously stay within your financial means. You know, this isn't anything crazy. I mean, we have, you know, Wild Forest, for example, we have a total of 40 packs. This isn't anything wild here. I mean, it's Wild Forest, <laughs> but this isn't anything crazy. Don't go crazy with it, but there's really no harm in buying a few extra packs and just stashing them away. And doing it this way as well, I think, is actually really cool because I think it's very displayable. I think it looks really nice. This is like the English set, like these two combined is also kind of neat. Um, you know, the cases make them look nice and the seals add a bit of a fun coolness factor to it as well. I don't know. I just think this is this is something really neat. And uh, I'm looking forward to the day in the future when I'll crack into these to open some of these packs. Now, there's actually one more really exciting thing about doing something like this. Another neat little kind of bonus uh, goodie that sort of accidentally or automatically is happening here. Uh, so I'll give you an example, right? A typical Japanese booster box like Starboard, for example. You know, we've got 30 packs in here. Um, nine out of 10 times you are getting one hit. There are double banger boxes. They exist. But usually you get one hit in a booster box. And that one hit is usually nine out of 10 times. It's just a regular full art, full art like these cards right here. Sometimes you get a gold card. Sometimes you get, you know, a rainbow card. And in this case here, or you might get an SAR if you're really lucky, right? But nine out of 10 times you're getting one hit. And nine out of 10 times that one hit is a full art. Generally speaking, you know, not accurate numbers, but you know what I mean. And that's another reason why I don't really want to open individual booster boxes in the future. Because let's say I crack into my boxes. You know, for these, I do have some, you know, I do have somebody sealed in my collection. Like I have a sealed shiny treasure box, right? I have, I have these sealed as well. And I have, you know, I have these sealed too. Um, this, by the way, just a little side note, this sticker on the booster box, this is the sticker that's on the booster box once you or if you buy it from the Pokemon Center, um, if it isn't from a lottery, like if it's from a lottery, it comes without a sticker. If it's just available online on their website for purchase, then there's a sticker on it. So if you see this sticker on a booster box, you, you can know that it's from the Pokemon Center. Be careful, it could probably be removed and put on put somewhere else. But you know, just a little thing to look out for. Anyways, if I were to crack into a booster box in the future, which I just mentioned, I don't really want to do, right? Because of that guaranteed hit rate, the risk that you're running into is that out of the first five packs, you might pull your hit, right? It could be the first pack even. Technically speaking, that's possible, right? 30 packs in here. Let's say, okay, it's time. I really want to open some Ancient Roar. I'm going to crack into my only sealed booster box. Ow, man, already feels terrible removing the shrink wrap. Ah, I don't really want to do it, but I just want to open these. I want to have some fun. It's time. Okay, I'll do it, whatever. And then you start opening packs and within the first five packs, you pull your one per box hit. And then, oh, it's kind of a feel bad moment because the remaining, you know, 25 packs, you know, you're most likely not getting anything else. So the whole opening experience fun sort of goes away quite a bit after the first five packs. And if you open a set that's a few years old, that feels even worse, you know, worse than just opening it up, removing the shrink wrap. My, that's just, oh man, that's that, that would feel terrible, you know? And I'm not just talking from a content creator perspective. Of course, if you are a content creator, getting the hit early is like the worst thing that can happen. But even if you just open these for fun on the side without making a video, it's not something that would be a ton of fun. These are awesome though, because with these, <laughs> sky's the limit. <laughs> these could be insane. Uh, because I bought these on five different days, packs in here for, are from at least five different booster boxes. I say at least because the way it works in a Pokemon Center, if you buy a booster box worth of packs, like you buy, let's say you buy 10 packs of Shiny Terry EX, they'll just get a booster box, remove the shrink wrap and give you the booster box. If you buy individual packs, they just take them from a stash they have in the back, right? And that those stashes come probably from booster boxes, I would assume, I'm not sure. But either way, you know, having gone on five different days, picked up five packs each time, these are packs from at least five different booster boxes. So there could technically be five God packs in here. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, 
uh, the chances of that happening are near zero, not gonna happen. But technically, it is possible. It is 100% possible. Unfortunately, having pulled the judge out of the one spare pack I had, there's almost guaranteed to be at least four dead packs in here. Because again, I, the one day I bought five packs. Out of those five packs, one was the judge. So there's almost guaranteed to be at least four dead packs in here. Uh, which is a bit of a shame, but oh well, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, there could be, you know, crazy stuff in here. Sky's the limit. I mean, unlike opening a single booster box where that one hit, that's it, right? Because I also shuffled these up a little bit. Technically speaking, it's possible that the last three packs of Cyber Judge contain an SAR each. It's unbelievably unlikely. I don't expect that to happen. But it is possible. And it means that... This remains exciting, or these packs remain exciting until the very last pack. If I pull a hit, it doesn't mean that there can't be another hit, right? Here, you pull the hit, that's it. Here, let's say I pull a hit right here, early on. Well, there could be another hit here, 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 anywhere. Because they come from packs from five different days. That's kind of exciting too. And I think that's important too, you know, when we talk about opening, keeping packs to open in the future, I think this is a better way of doing it. Now, the risk or the potential downside is that these being from five, at least five different booster boxes um, and never having bought, you know, a full booster box worth of cards, uh, packs, it's possible there's absolutely zero hits in here. Like if I got very unlucky, then there is no hits in here. <laughs> I mean, with the amount of packs that I bought and having gone five different times, that's incredibly unlikely. I mean, I would have to be stupid unlucky for there to be no hits in here but that's the risk that's kind of the downside right you're not getting the guaranteed hit rate of the booster box but they will stay exciting until the very last pack you know i might not open these all at once i might only open five at a time but i know that once i get to the la last five packs no matter what i pulled before i can still pull something the possibility is there and i think that's so important too like that makes it so much more fun in the future the last thing i want to mention is that by doing it this way right it's not just investing in my future fun and having the secondary thing there of if these somehow were to increase in value i could sell them but by having these available i'm also kind of protecting my actual seal boxes um you know these are in my collection call it an investment call it a collection piece it's somewhere in the middle right um, but these are in my sealed collection Having these available means I will have no reason, no incentive at all to open these up, which means they are more likely to stay sealed. I usually don't have a hard time not opening stuff that I have sealed. Like it usually doesn't bother me. I'm not someone who you know can't control themselves very, very well, but it's just an extra layer of protection, so to say, right? So like, I think that's another kind of cool little uh, factor that uh, can be taken into account here of why these are like good. And so, yeah, uh, if if you think it's a cool idea or whatever, like I, th I do recommend doing something like this because again, you know, fast forward three, four or five years, chances are you're gonna wanna open some packs that you can easily get today. Um, so buy a few, prepare yourself for when that co time comes in the future. Don't go crazy with it, stay within your financial means, but I think that's a great thing to do, you know? Man. It almost doesn't matter what the set is. You know, Japanese X and Y, black and white sets. I don't care about what the expected value is, uh, if it's terrible or not, uh, what the best card is, whatever. I wish I could open some black and white and X and Y packs today uh, that I bought at MSRP. But it's impossible because I didn't do it and I don't have any sealed. And uh, yeah, I would, can only get them on a the secondary market and that's a terrible idea. I am preparing myself for the future and I intend to do these uh, this with future sets that are coming out, you know, buy one or two, uh, at least one, if it's a good one, maybe two booster boxes to actually keep sealed and then buy some more packs, individual packs uh, from the Pokemon Center on different days and make, you know, at least one custom booster box to keep for the future um, to open up at some point. I think that's going to be cool as long as stuff is readily available at MSRP. Right? Once, if we were to go back to a crazy state where I can't find any product, then I'm not going to try and do this. But for the stuff that's readily available, I'm preparing myself because I know in the future I will want to open these sets. This might be the investment I'm most excited about. I can't wait for when the day comes when I open these up in the future. And 
you know, I can make a video in five years and open up, open up some of these packs and not feel bad about having to buy them on a secondary market. Uh, heck, I might do a live stream and offer them to my viewers at very reasonable prices because I got them for MSRP, right? Anything is possible here. And I'm just preparing myself for potential situations in the future. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about this kind of idea. Are you doing the same thing? Are you putting some stuff away to open in the future? Um, or have you just not thought about that yet? Uh, keep in mind, again, stuff that's easily available right now, at some point, it will be out of print. <laughs> I don't want to like talk about FOMO here, because this isn't FOMO, because this stuff is easily, readily available. And buying a few packs, like, you know, 20, 30, 40 packs, Japanese packs, um, is no big deal, right? There's not really FOMO here. It's whatever, right? Um, don't buy loose packs. If you want to try to do something similar with Japanese boxes, do not buy loose packs on a secondary market. Please don't do it. Try and get them from the Pokemon Center when they are available. They do sometimes sell loose packs. Keep an eye on that. Um, or if you know a very trusted seller that uh, you can you know, buy from, but be very careful with loose Japanese packs. But yeah, let me know what you think about this idea. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for that. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,